please give heading in the notes measuring and managing market risk subject is history no science portfolio management measuring and managing market risk so this is a new reading in 2017 cfa level 2 curriculum uh, portfolio management is a subject which has uh, highest level of uh, turnover or attrition or changes in the syllabus so every year uh, cfa level 2 portfolio management at least in the last consecutive four exams there has been substantial changes okay and one of the reason for doing that is uh, that is one area within finance which is changing rapidly okay so uh, the idea of this reading is that all this years uh, cfa program had very good uh, coverage on derivatives fix, fixed income but it did not have a coverage from a risk management perspective but if you would see cfa institute gets a large number of candidates from uh, india and maybe even china and especially in india Uh, we are getting we are seeing a lot of traction in the risk management projects okay so my guess is one of the reason why they've added is uh, they always ensure that the curriculum creates opportunity for people to get placed so the major focus of this reading is understanding one particular number which is called v a r value at risk so can someone help me understand what v a r means Okay, so it's a probability. No. Just one, one at a time, huh? Probability of disaster. Oh, okay. So you mean to say worst case scenario? Okay. Yes. It is a extent of loss. Up to what level we can have loss? Okay. So you're saying uh, so what he said is that one percent bar is more dangerous than ten percent bar because uh, there's a lesser probability but maybe higher magnitude is what you're saying. So which means there are different uh, bars associated with different probability. Okay, anyone else? So so can I say that bar will uh, give us some probability? and with that associated amount of loss is that how we should be thinking of it so let's at sing a practical perspective here imagine uh, we have a fund manager okay and that fund manager has he is sitting on a portfolio of let us say 100 million dollars now that fund manager wants to know that in a particular month so we are looking at monthly statistics now how bad can it be i mean if things go wrong what might happen so var is a risk metric and we are focused on the left tail left tail would be yeah losses left tail means we are looking at uh, the probability of losses here so how bad things could be so what you ask him in return is that uh, you would have to give us some probability so that we can quote you a number okay so let us say he is looking at a uh, monthly 5% var okay so what he expects from us assuming we are sitting into his risk management team he expects us to quote a number okay so let us say we do some mathematics or statistics around this and we come up with a number of let us say 2.5 million dollars so the interpretation is that there is a 95% probability listen to me carefully there is a 95% probability that your losses in a particular month will not exceed 2.5 million dollars okay so there is a 95% probability that your losses in a particular month will not exceed 2.5 which means there is a 5% probability that your losses will exceed beyond 2.5 million dollars so this is what war does for us so there could be a monthly war there could be a weekly war there could also be annual var var could be calculated for any time length and we would look at those calculations as well and then we can calculate var at 5% or we can calculate at 1% or we can calculate at 10% i mean we can calculate at any of the probability which is specified are we okay with this now initially 
so i want you to write down the interpretation of this okay so write down that this is the value of portfolio value of portfolio is 100 million and 5% monthly var is 2.5 million 5% monthly var is 2.5 million interpretation 1 95 there is a 95% probability that monthly losses that monthly losses will not exceed will not exceed so in bracket write down maximum losses bracket close in bracket maximum losses bracket close so i'm repeating sentence there is a 95% probability monthly losses will not exceed 2.5 million us dollars okay second interpretation second interpretation there is a 5% probability there is a 5% probability that monthly losses monthly losses will be more than monthly losses will be more than so in bracket minimum loss in bracket minimum loss so monthly losses will be more than 2.5 million dollars okay so now they don't the convention is we don't quote var as a negative number okay but if you see a var being quoted as 2.5 million dollar it is to be interpreted as a loss amount are we okay with this now we are going to do one specific example of var initially just to build thought process around this and the heading you would be given giving here is parametric var parametric var now someone please help me understand what is parametric based on the distribution but then what is parameter have you heard of this word before parameter sample statistic ha uh -huh. characteristic of the population so at level 1 we learned some characteristic of the population we call it as parameter and some characteristic of the sample we call it as sample statistic okay so here we are concerned with parameter so what we are essentially saying is we are going to make assumptions about the population in fact let's write it down somewhere so what whenever you see some statistic and if the statistician says this is a parametric number what it simply means is you have made assumptions about characteristics of the population so i'm going to write that here we have made assumptions about the characteristics characteristics of population we have made assumptions about the characteristics of population are we okay and typically in parametric var what assumptions we make so number 1 we assume that population follows normal distribution okay so typically most of the var models which are parametric they assume that population follows normal distribution okay do you remember any of the characteristics of normal distribution shape of a normal distribution is bell shaped and mean median mode is same and there is a symmetry in the data set symmetry means 50% data on the right 50% on the left the equidistance area under the curve is going to be same are we okay so second mean is known and sigma is known that's it so these are the three assumptions we need to make and then we can make we can start calculating var okay for example let us say that let us say that let's think from a practical perspective okay so let us say we are trying to uh, calculate var for a broad market uh, broad market equity portfolio broad market equity portfolio invested in indian markets okay so for broad market we are going to use proxy as let us say nifty so for a broad broad market we will use proxy as nifty just to help us build a thought process around this now there is an investor who has a portfolio of uh, rupees so indian rupees uh, 500 million okay we are looking at a 500 million indian rupee portfolio now this fund manager is interested in knowing if things go wrong this month 
or a month after that, how much money will I lose? Okay. So he comes to you, you are a risk management expert. So the first thing that you do is you check whether uh, can I assume that uh, Nifty follows a normal distribution. Okay, so in practice, no, but for this example, yes. So we will assume that returns on Nifty, they follow normal distribution. Then you find out two things. Number one, what is the mean monthly return? And what would be a monthly standard deviation? What would be a monthly standard deviation? You need these two things. We have assumed that it follows normal distribution. Are we okay here? And this is also one of the biggest limitation of this bar that it forces you to assume that data is following normal distribution, this particular type of bar. Are we together? So someone help me with this, tell me mean monthly returns. On an average, what has been the monthly returns that you would expect to earn on a broad market index portfolio in India? One, one person would be a good estimate. So let's say mean monthly return is 1%. What do you think about standard deviation? Annual standard deviation of 15. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work that way, but let me keep it as uh, 2%. We are making Nifty more volatile than what it is, but let's keep monthly standard deviation as 2%. Okay. Now with this information, we have sufficient data to calculate, let us say a 5% monthly VAR. 5% monthly VAR. Now see how are we going to do this. So we will plot a normal distribution. Okay, so bell shaped normal distribution. The mean of the distribution is how much? Tell me mean of the distribution is how much? 1% and standard deviation is how much? 2%. We are interesting in finding out this point on the left where we would be leaving out 5% on the left of that point and 95% on the right of that point. Okay, we are just concerned with this tail, which is the left tail. Are we okay? 5% value at risk. Now, if you remember a little bit of uh, your level 1 quant, we could find out Z values given probability. For example, here the standard normal distribution Z value would be 0. Correct, and then on the right, one to three standard deviation. On the left, one to three standard deviation. So, what should be a appro appropriate Z value here for five percent? It would be one point six five negative. One point six five negative. What it means is that five percent probability on the left is 1.65 standard deviations away. 1.65 is the appropriate, uh, I'm so sorry for this, 1.65 is the appropriate Z value that we use. Now we have to find out a corresponding value from your normal distribution here. So how will we find out? We will say 1 percentage minus, minus because we are always, we are only on the left hand side. 1.65 into a monthly standard deviation of 2% and that would be how much? It would be minus 2.3%. Okay, so this number here, is that correct? So this is minus 2.3 percentage here, which means there's a 5% probability that your negative returns would be minus 2.3 or 95% probability that you would be on the right of minus 2.3, 5% probability you would be on the left of 2 point, minus 2.3. Then this minus 2.3 we will multiply with 500 million. So 500 million, but this time I'm dropping the minus sign. I'm just going to say 2.3 percentage. Okay, so how much would that be? 11.5. And then your answer is 
that your 5% monthly VAR is 11.5 million. Okay, the interpretation is 95% probability that your monthly losses will be less than 11.5 million but 5% probability that your monthly losses will be more than 11.5 million.